Hello everyone, welcome to the video on GPAT 2022 Crash Course MCQ series. In this video, I am going to explain about previous GPAT given pharmacology questions with answer explanation and this is part 7. This is my YouTube channel. If you like my video content, do share and subscribe the channel. Let's get into the topic. Now, tamoxifen is a non-steroidal drug acting at steroid receptor. It produces what type of effects? See, tamoxifen, torimefen, um, clomifen, all of them are known as SERMs, Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator. Now, you need to understand this word. What do you, why do they call as modulators? Because they can act as anti-estrogen at certain tissues and they can act as estrogen agonist at certain tissues. Now, these drugs are selectively used to treat breast cancer. Now, the reason for breast cancer is hypersecretion of estrogen at breast tissue that is what causes in cancer. Now these drugs selectively they act as anti-estrogen at breast, breast tissue whereas they retain agonistic activity of estrogen at bone and uterus. So what is the advantage of this? They can be used selectively to treat breast cancer without causing any side effects at this bone and uterus. So that is the reason why they are called as SERMs, Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulator. At one junction anti-estrogen, at another junction estrogenic activity. So what is the answer? They have both these actions Q and S. Now, option Q and S, B is the correct answer. Moving to the next one. Now which of the following aminoglycoside is used to treat tuberculosis? See all these drugs are aminoglycosides. Among all of them only streptomycin can be used to treat tuberculosis. It has got proven efficacy to treat tuberculosis. Now World Health Organization programs as well as India follows a program called as DOTS, Directly Absorbed Treatment Short Codes. Both of them include streptomycin as one of the doses regimen to treat tuberculosis. So among all the aminoglycosides, only streptomycin is, is used to treat tuberculosis. Now, the most common initial treatment for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Let us understand what is this is. See, benign prostatic hyperplasia, the, the prostate gland is lying adjacent to uterus. So, when this prostate gland undergoes hyperplasia, the tissue size increases. When the size is increased, it will be pressing ureters. So, whatever the urine is formed, it is passing through this ureter and because of this benign prostatic hyperplasia, ureters are constricted and urination becomes a bigger problem. To treat this, alpha-1 antagonists are used. This alpha-1 antagonist will cause smooth muscle relaxation of ureter. When smooth muscle is relaxed, what happens? The diameter of this ureter increases and urine passes will become normalized. So, the most common initial treatment to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia is alpha-1 antagonist like prazosin, terajosin, alpha-josin, I'm sorry, prazosin, terajosin, alpha-josin, doxajosin, tamsulosin, all of them are used to treat benign prostatic hyperplasia. Moving to the next one. Now, all of the following NSCIDs are safe in children except, see all these are NSCIDs which are widely used to treat pains, fever and inflammation. But the only exception is aspirin. The reason is there is a chance for aspirin to cause a syndrome known as Reyes syndrome. Now what is this Reyes syndrome? Reyes syndrome usually occurs to children. Now children who are recovering from viral infections, viral infections like influenza, there is a chance for them to get this Reyes syndrome. Now in this Reyes syndrome the main affected tissues are brain and liver. Now it causes encephalitis or inflammation of brain and liver damage also occurs. Now this condition is aggravated when children take aspirin. So usually this viral infection causes severe headache. To treat that if they are taking aspirin, both brain damage and liver damage is aggravated. So Reyes syndrome is aggravated. So remember children less than 18 years of old should not take aspirin. All NSAIDs can be taken except aspirin. Moving to the next one. Now, which of the following hormone acts on itself via second messenger? See, all of them, see, via second messenger means look about the options. What are the options you have? Thyroxine, estrogen, aldosterone, all of them are hormones. And they are kind of steroidal hormones. And these steroidal hormones get inside the cell and they will be acting on nuclear receptors. Now, on the nucleus, like on in, inside the nucleus on the DNA there are certain elements are there they are known as hormone responsive elements all these hormones will be acting on this and show their actions 
So they are not acting via second messenger, rather they are directly acting on hormone response elements which are present on nucleus. So which one acts on second messenger? Angiotensin 2. It acts on G protein coupled receptor. So it actions are through G protein coupled receptor and it will be releasing inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. So these are second messengers. So the effects of angiotensin 2 will be excited by second messengers like IP3 and DAG. So option A is the correct one. Moving to the next one. Now drug to be used in emergency treatment of heroin overdose. See heroin is diacetyl morphine. So all these opioids the only antidote to treat opioid toxicity is naloxone. Whether it is morphine, heroin, whatever it is the only drug of choice to treat is naloxone. It is an antagonist. It blocks the receptor and nullifies the effects of opioids. Going to the next one. Which of the following is most likely to undergo lysis? See, you need to understand the options carefully. See, a cell losing water from its cytoplasm, it will not undergo lysis. No, at the max it undergoes shell shrinkage because cytoplasm is lost. A cell with intact peptidoglycan, no, intact peptidoglycan will remain cell as such. Now, a cell with disrupted pentaglycine its cell wall, you need to think about this. See, peptidoglycan, peptidoglycan is what makes cell wall of bacteria. Now, peptidoglycan is made up of repeating units of n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine. So, you have repeated units of NAG and NAM units are there. Now, these units are cross-linked with a pentaglycine chain. A pentaglycine chain cross-links these units. This cross-linking is what strengthens cell wall integrity. If this cross-linking is disrupted, what happens? Cell wall integrity is disrupted and it undergoes lysis. All the penicillin's beta-lactam antibiotics will act in this manner. So the option C, a cell wall with disrupted pentaglycine in its cell wall is what causes cell lysis. So option C is the correct one. Moving to the next one. Now match the following. Now look at this. Bedaquilin is a novel anti-tubercular drug. Citagliptin is an anti-diabetic. Maxillitin is an anti-arrhythmic drug. Paroxetine is anti-depressant. And you see the options. 1 goes with S. 2 goes with P. 3 maxillitin anti-arrhythmic. And paroxetin is anti-depressant. So option A is the correct answer. Moving to the next one, a patient with severe anxiety and depression should avoid which of the following antidepressants. When you see the drugs, all of them are antidepressant. But out of them, bupropion has got problematic side effects. What are they? They are related to CNS system. They cause increased CNS excitation. Now see, the subject has also got anxiety. And anxiety will get aggravated because of CNS adverse effects. So bupropion has to be avoided. Now, moving to the next one. See, what is the mechanism of action of carbamazepine? Carbamazepine is anti-epileptic drug. Now, carbamazepine acts by inhibiting sodium channel. So, mechanism of action of carbamazepine is blockade of sodium channel at neuronal levels. Moving to the next one, clopidogrel is a. See, clopidogrel is an antiplatelet agent. It acts on P2Y12 receptor antagonist. These are ADP receptors. You know, clopidogrel, ticlopidine. See, both of them are thionopyridine derivatives. Now, this ticlopidine clopidogrel inhibits these receptors irreversibly. They cause irreversible inhibition of these receptors. Whereas, prasugrel, prasugrel cangrelor, these drugs will inhibit the same receptors but reversible manner. So, all of them will be acting on ADP receptors, but for this question, clopidogrel is a P2Y12 receptor antagonist. This receptor is an ADP receptor. So, option A is the correct answer. Moving to the next one. Now, barbiturates are replaced by benzodiazepines. Why? Because barbiturates has got low therapeutic index, right? Barbiturates suppress REM sleep, right? Barbiturates has high potential for physical dependence and abuse. So, all the above are correct. Because of these things, nowadays, People are using benzodiazepines, not the barbiturates. Moving to the next one. John of Asaculata of suprarenal gland producers. See, suprarenal or adrenal gland. The gland has got medulla and cortex. Medulla will be releasing adrenaline. This is medulla job. Whereas, cortex has got three different zones are there. Now, 
the first zone is zona glomerulosa second one is zona fasciculata third one is zona reticularis now zona glomerulosa produces mineralocorticoids like aldosterone zona fasciculata produces glucocorticoid like cortisol zona reticularis produces sex hormones now zona fasciculata will be producing glucocorticoids option b is the correct answer moving to the next one now which of the following is long acting beta 2 agonist that can be given by nebulization as a dry powder inhaler for the treatment of covpd formatrol is the option now see covpd acts for 12 hours and its onset of action is very rapid within two minutes it starts showing its, its action now see, in order to treat asthma or COPD, beta-2 agonists are used, like albuterol, albuterol is also used, salbutamol, albuterol, all of them can be used. But the problem comes, comes with duration of action. If it acts, it acts for only 2 or 3 hours, it causes problem because asthma or COPD attack will occur at early in the morning. So in order to control that early morning asthmatic attacks, a longer duration beta-2 agonist has to be used and that is formaterol. Moving to the next one. Now, which of the which of the first drugs are potentiated by the second drug? So, this is about drug-drug interaction, and let us understand them. See, phenytoin, phenobarbital, primidone, all of them anti-epileptic drugs has got a property called enzyme induction. They they enhances the activity of enzymes. When enzyme in, enzymes are induced, the concomitantly given drug will get metabolized. So, effects of ethanol estradiol are decreased. So the question is about potentiation, but here decrease occurs. Warfarin, pheno, phenobarbitan, same. Phenobarbitan is an anti-epileptic drug, causes enzyme induction, and it reduces the effects of warfarin. The question asks about potentiation. This is not. Now look at this. Lithium and thiazide diuretic. Thiazide di diuretic increases the levels of lithium. It reduces lithium excretion. So what happens? Potentiation of lithium occurs. So this is what is is the question. Potentiated. So this is what happens. Now, uh, the last one, bromocryptin, metoclopramide. Bromocryptin is D2 agonist, whereas metoclopramide is D2 antagonist. So, both of them acts oppositely. Physiological antagonism occurs. So, these are all the 15 questions from previous GPAT in pharmacology subject. Hope you like the topics and concept. If you like the video, do share and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video.